All right, staying with the market, a big-name economist took a lot of heat from colleagues because he was positive right after the election of President Trump, positive on the election and for the economy. Directly opposite, of course, from, uh, what was his name again, uh, Paul Krugman. Oh, yes. No. <laughs> now, the, the guy who got it right is with us now. His name is Ken Rogoff. He's the former chief economist at the IMF, a big hitter in economics. Are you not, sir? Well, I Welcome to the program. <laughs> Flattery is the mother's milk of television, Ken. Come on, you know that. Okay. Well, you're good at it. <laughs> no, thank you very much. Now, on the program earlier this morning, we had Larry Kudlow, and I pressed him, are we going to get 4 4.5% growth in the third quarter? And he said he would not be surprised at that. What say you? Well, I mean, the economy is clearly very strong, and I think we're on a track of looking at 3% growth on a fairly sustainable basis. And this quarter could be that. I mean, these numbers are, you know, quarter by quarter numbers are hard to read. But overall, it, it, would I be justified in saying this economy is booming and it stays this way until close to the end of the year? Absolutely. I think it's something that's stunning people around the world who are keep upgrading their estimate of what the U.S. is doing. Are you surprised? No, I'm not. I mean, mind you, it wasn't so much because of the election, but there was the sense of doom and gloom hanging over the economy before it. And would have, you know, it was even worse when they saw Trump won. And I think they're confusing the idea that, you know, there are some productivity issues, there are problems. With we had a financial crisis. It takes a decade to get out of a financial crisis. So I think this whole idea, I don't know if you use this here, secular stagnation, we'll never grow again, we'll never invent anything again, there's no demand. It was overblown. And so the baseline's very good. But it seemed to me that President Trump unleashed the great American energy machine of growth and prosperity. He seemed to unleash that with tax cuts and deregulation. Where am I going wrong? Well, I, I mean, no, I agree with some things he did and not others. Corporate tax cut was a great idea. And let's face it, this is a country that didn't need more regulation. Uh, I worry about the environment and cleaning it up 10 years from now. I worry about inequality, what the backlash will be 10 years from now. But absolutely, the policies you know, that were put in place on balance didn't hurt. What about this trade agreement? It's not quite a deal yet with Mexico. It is an agreement. It's a two-way street here. I say it is, and you're the economist here, but I say it was a political win, at the very least, for President Trump. What say you? Well, his trade negotiations in general are political theater, uh, at least the way he describes them and his trades are Peter Navarro describes them, are kind of nuts from an economic point of view. But I agree about China. Nuts from an economic point yeah, of uh, view? Yes, yeah. The trade's not a zero-sum game. I mean, goodness, we were the big winners over the last decades from trade. But it is true, China is trying to push us out. China wants to be the next hegemon. China wants to take over. And that's a, that's a good area. Mexico and Canada are friends. I don't think he's necessarily making the agreement better, but there were things to fix. It's complicated. I, I see a little bit of good in it, but I wish that we just weren't doing it. Really? I do. I, I, I wish we just tweaked NAFTA and didn't say we had to change it. But that wouldn't be Trump. Trump came to office saying, I'm going to refix this. I'm going to do something about he, this. He, he's so he's smart. doing what he said he was going to do. Politically, it's smart. Sanders probably would have w trying to do something similar, maybe with a different approach. Uh, it tra the NAFTA is spectacularly unpopular with the left. I talked to students. Everyone's absolutely convinced it was the worst thing that ever happened by Sanders, <laughs> not by Trump. And so it, it is good politically and maybe positions him to do something with China. Uh, um, a very serious and difficult subject. I know you just came back from Bogota, Colombia, and I think you observed firsthand the fallout of the dreadful crisis in Venezuela. Well, what did you see? Now, what's spilling over into Colombia, which is just a small piece of what's going on in Venezuela, they have over a million, maybe some estimates, 1.5 million refugees. So that's the equivalent of, you know, seven or eight million in the United States. There's no refugee camps like in Greece or Lebanon. People are sleeping on the roads, in parks and streets. It's, it's, it's just awful. You saw that in Bogota? 
Uh, they uh, make them you don't see it in Bogota. It's really cold, and you don't see it so much. But uh, in the warmer climates, uh, you do you do see it. It's it's. Uh, I, I didn't see it f so much firsthand, but talked to a lot of. But there's clients. no fix, is there? There's no quick fix for Venezuela. Well, they've got to push the regime out, and I, I think uh, you know there's no question. At some point, the regime has to go. We have to help the refugees now, and I think both the left and the right have to you know acknowledge we need regime change. The left has been, I think, supporting Venezuela, saying they're doing yeah. a good job, socialist revolution. Ken Rogoff, the man who got it right. Thanks for joining us, Ken. Thank you. you. We'll see you again soon. Thank you, sir.